I'm gonna grab that mug. You pick out a broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of the yellow man frolicking in saffron. An antique? Only in its social sensibility. Mm-hmm. You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the interact tab. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think. Sorry, what was he saying? Read your ledger and name and name the case. Put clothes in the trash. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper, or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Yeah, Lieutenant, what is this? What? That thing. It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Kind of information? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like... All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine too. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Thanks. Okay. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Sprouts the yellow papers? In the back, you see thin, translucent copy of paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. Types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Is conduct fine? A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields, but they appear pleasantly vague. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. 
The ink sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Shake it. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How do I open it? With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. It is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Let's inspect the toilet paper. It's just toilet paper. Stick into the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. Still wet, the toilet paper peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off with your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. You smell it? The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Mm, yum. What about the white papers? They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty you count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What's in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. There's a mention of a naming convention? Yes, it appears you employ a shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. And they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, the square bullet hole murders. Another yet, the unsolvable case. Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location and the murder at the Uka parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close, yeah, my uh, cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention. You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? No, I mean the non-numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. What's that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM. 
right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. Seem to have one called to the square bullet hole martyrs? Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that, to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. It was a workplace accident. Jesus. It's two cases a week, a good load? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Uh, I'm not sure I actually completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. Yeah, I, I definitely burned out. That's okay. We all do, sooner or later. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. Count the number of pages. There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Commit to paper using the pen Lena gave you. Hey, look at that. The tasks you've completed flow out of the kind green ape pen in a brash freehand similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross out the ones I've completed. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Have you by any chance named our case, Lieutenant? No, actually. Any ideas? This was the line at the beginning of the game that I didn't finish reading. Furies are at home in the mirror. Furies? Yes, well, I don't know. I have to be honest, I'm not experiencing the internal strife that you refers to. And also, could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think, what would that be? A good normal name? Yes, yes. You know what that normal name is, but it's so plain. Anything else, please. Uh, shit on a stick. The Hanged Man. Great, that's great. That's actually what I was thinking, too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Alright, so I can... I can level up anything. My conceptualization is five for some reason. Bonus from an item. Bonus from thoughts. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So let's level up a uh, physical instrument, I think. Wait, hold on. 
Ready, aim, fire. Hand-eye coordination. Perception. Reaction speed. But I have to level up in order to re-roll that check, don't I? The one that I failed earlier. But it has a specific stat. Doesn't say. Interfacing? I think it's inter interfacing. Master machines pick locks. Ah! And pockets. Yeah, that could be really good. So you can revert? Really? Well, that's interesting. Let's try to open that compartment again. Can't. Proving to be harder than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Rip. Try again later. Is still not what happens. Fuck this compartment. You should throw it away. Rip, dude. Ah, oh, all right, fine. Worry about it later. Oh wait, I need to talk to the kid again. Fuck this coon, okay? Yeah, I want to discuss the body with you again. The fuck about it? You're testing. Get lost. F yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? The dead man's clothes were in the trash. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. Someone may have tampered with the murder scene, kid. Come on. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price. 500 real. Yeah, I've already got pants. Thanks, though. Whatever. Kuno was trying to help you, but you're too fat for falling anyway, pig. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, did you ever climb that ladder? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! So it would be unclimbable? Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat! The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! What's in that greenhouse over there? Dunno. Kipped ass gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Erie Oppergeit descent. 
It used to be a common first name among the airy upper guides of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. You mean the young woman in the whirling rags? Look, Kuro doesn't explain shit. Kuro just says shit. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Yeah, I'll look. I'll ask her about that. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. It's a mug in the trash. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Is this adequate depiction of a South Sumerian man have anything to do with it? Yeah, Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you picked it after the mug fucker? Cause he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno! Speak louder, Kuno! Exactly what I'm saying. Someone has tampered with the crime scene. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat-down basement, huh? Mug guy gonna get tied to the radiator. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Tell the Kuno who it was. He's curious. He likes putting two and two together here. Okay. Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno f Yeah? Get your bacon shit away! Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo! Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face! There's a stack of a turnite back there. That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind, lazy dinks. He's hiding something. You hiding something? Pig, if Kuno was hiding something, it would be hidden. But it is not hidden, is it, sire? You picked up on it. You should examine the pile of roofing material again. Yeah, whatever. Kuno, Kuno doesn't... An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because it's nice and orderly, well laid rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Sag? Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that toy from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. How do I turn on the headlights, Kim? All right. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rails per minute gauge jumps, and the engine of the Caprice Canadian comes to life with a whiny growl. God, could you not do that? Jesus. Press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. The frequency tableau lights up and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. 
Alice, it's me. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the Lieutenant's default radio station is. You connect me with the 41st. Just a second, officer. Ten two, ten five. This is 41st. Uh, come in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box-shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas. The radio switchboard the man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and cops know relay code. 10 4, station 41, I've got urgent business. 10 4, message received. 10 5, relay message. What's your status? Over. Reporting in. 10 18, state your message, sir. Uh, I need to report my badge missing. 10 9, over. I can't find it anywhere. 10 4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10 22 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Yeah, I'm just gonna stay quiet. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Dick Mullen? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. Oh. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Rip. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Come on, tell him to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop. Says this is serious. <laughs> of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. Satellite officer Wittmar conquers. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Can we just move on? 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Oh, great. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! Dick Mullen lost his badge! What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Yeah, I have something else to discuss. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Uh oh. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your. Holy fuck! You don't know where it is, do you? Oh sh. Oh no. Oh god, it's not here. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Ten nine, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Convince them you didn't lose your gun. Uh, say nothing. Ten one, you're breaking up. Ten nine, repeat, please. Over. Uh, no. Ten nine, come in, officer. Over. Come in, officer. 10-9, repeat message, please. Did you misplace your firearm? Over. Just say you lost your gun. Anything else would only make the situation worse here. Yes, I am not gonna lie. Yes, I lost it. He says he doesn't have it. <laughs> oh, no. Dear God, he lost his gun? Oh, oh my, I can't. <laughs> This isn't really a laughing matter. Mac can face a giant of Coco Nur by himself, but this go here, I didn't piss his pants. <laughs> oh, 
I, I can't. Fuck. He lost his ass because he still got his wiener. <laughs> I'm not going to. Ask him. Uh, Sergeant Orson here is wondering if you are still in possession of your genitalia. Over. I left it at his mama's house after I fucked her ass all night. Holy shit. Oh no. I'm not gonna say that. Yes, I lost my wiener too. He acknowledges your joke and asks you to lay off. <laughs> lay off? Lay off? Tell him we'll lay off when he retreats the goddamn police property that he has been entrusted with. Satellite officer vi Alright, I'm for affirmative. Officer is in pursuit of his firearm. Oh god, I. Uh... Officer, do you need further assistance? Over. There's some personal details I need to discuss. Uh, okay, 10 4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. Yeah, I do need the information. I gotta... I gotta get this info. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10 12 visitors present here. Over. I ever told you about my life? Oh, he's not gonna want to talk to me. I told him I need information. Any news about my family? Ten. Um, excuse me, sir. Over. I thought you might have heard of them. Uh, no, sir, I haven't. You're not really keen on mentioning your home life, so I've always assumed things weren't that good on that front. Over. Yeah, I know. I either tell him, no, never mind. Or I legitimately come out and say, hey, bro. You just... Just give me that info. Alright, give me my address, would you? 10 for Your address? Hold up, Jules. He doesn't fucking know where he lives. Did I hear that right? Seems like it, sir. No, fuck him. Don't tell him anything, you understand? He's been hellbound for the gutter. Let him have it. Sorry, sir. Anything more I can do for you? Over. No. Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh... Yeah, can you connect me with a civilian named Sylvie? Of course. What is her number, officer? Yeah, didn't Gart give you his no her, her number? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-2986. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. 
quite a lot of time has passed. Officer, I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Oh, jeez. See you later, uh, 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 Andrew. Jeez. I was gonna call you Spazer, and then I'm like, I know his name. Yes, hello? I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? Was it you who called the police? No, not me. You know who made that call? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. Didn't a corpse behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the corpse. What does the Union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. The Union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Yeah, is the union the law around here? Legally, no. In reality, yes. Martinez is de facto policed by the dock workers' union. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't... yeah, go on. I didn't want to get in trouble with the union? Okay. Do you know who put the victim's clothes in the trash? No, I don't know. It wasn't me. I haven't been out there since. I was terrified of the stent and... and the corpse. You know how my paperwork ended up in the trash? Well... You tried to jam it down the toilet, sir. Clogging it completely. After I had unclogged the toilet and retrieved the paperwork, I threw it out in the trash, thinking you didn't need it. I am sorry about that. Anything else, detective? See my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. That's... The law. Not what I meant. This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. My badge is missing. Have you seen it? Oh. No. I haven't, sorry. Real police would have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Jim doesn't have a uniform and he seems real to me. He's in plain clothes, voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. There are officers who wear the signature Perseus black uniforms to the highest ranks in the RCM and end up buried in them as well. Others do it more casually. Looks like you're one of them. You quit your job, why? You mean, why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm... not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Did you leave because of guard? What? No, why would you even think that? Told me he asked you out. Please, don't bring Gar into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Yeah. What about my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. 
When did that happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know, when you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, people don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Me neither. Well, do you know what happened to my gun? No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead. Saying things like, big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. All right, thanks. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Why does she seem angry with me? Yes, you have obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling in Rags when she was still working there. Yeah, can you tell me what I did? I can't remember. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skewer thing happened. It just made me want to quit. The skewer thing? The stuffed bird. The great skewer. You threw it against the wall while screaming, Fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. Yeah, why do I always end up screwing everything up? It was a pretty bird. There since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. We call her Scotty. You're telling me that I was the one that made you want to quit? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting. Union guys grabbing my ass. Kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... Yeah, go, go ahead, tell me what I did. Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more, I, I hate it now. Which, which song was it? We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant. And I don't want to know. And then you scream something about how you're a piece of shit human being and why does anyone even let you work as a policeman? That you'd fire yourself, but you can't even do that. That sounds intense. And then, I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Yeah. Well, shit. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. Yeah, I'm gonna apologize. God, I I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, and let's pretend it never happened. Alright, what else did I sing beside to OO? I'm looking for a song. 
Oh, all sorts of things. From disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. Something about the smallest church? Yes, that's the one you like to sing along to the most. The later it got, the more that one came on. Interesting. You still have to find the copy though, before you can blast it. Yeah, thanks for talking. You hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? No, I'm done. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is, River West. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally them up. The first row has 18 dots. The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. And the last one? The last row has three perforations. That's it? That's it. Ask him if he knows what that is. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. The first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? You think I have any idea? Fair point. Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. A lot? It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. I used to be good, at least that's some solace, I guess. Right. Those are your confirmed kills. You've got precisely three perforations there. That's not too many. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamra Quarter, it's rather tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. Yeah, figures. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. Maybe I should find one. Anything's better than annihilating yourself with drugs and alcohol. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Thanks. The lieutenant nods. Look at the street grid. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM. And yet, 
The major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. See you later, Paka. Have a good one. I'm gonna look around me. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stopped lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. Where are we on this? Let me see. Right here. I'm sure I've seen worse. Oh, yes. Coal City. Le Royaume. The Burnt Out Quarter. Right. I'll go turn off the lights. You can now see your statistics on your journal page, to the right of the task description. Completed, active. Okay. We leveled up again. Uh, I could dump another point in the interface. <laughs> Try to break that thing open. Uh, is my thing done? Almost. How much longer? 15 minutes. my suggestion items fight or flight response Threaten people. All of these are so good. Why is my... Suggestion unsavory odor. The shoes also. What is Savoir Fair? 
See, there it is. Done with panache. Level that up a little. Okay. Oh, I could try the ceiling fan again. Okay. I'll try that real quick. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny- Oh no, it's happening again. You didn't catch it, and now there's a numbness in your left arm. It's even worse this time. Maybe it's still happening. Finally, the stabbing recedes. God. This fan has Damn two it. chain pull Save. Oh, save. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there for tonight, everybody.